Okay. Hi, my name is Reverend Dale Brown, and I get to sit next to some of the most interesting and capable and wonderful people. And I do that today with a new, newer member of the church here at Community Church and a brand new member of the Staff Parish Relations Committee. Her name is Karen. And Karen, welcome to you this, this day. But Karen's here for something that I think is really important. And, and she brought this ministry to the church in a new way. And it has sort of become, I think, an interest on a lot of people's part. Uh, and that is the Code Purple Cold Weather Shelter for the Homeless in Ocean City. So Karen, thank you for your genuine concern for these predominantly men, yes. uh, but it can be men and or women. And, and, and tell me a little bit about what is it that makes this a great concern for you? Okay, well, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. You're welcome. And um, I guess what struck me was uh, in the last few years uh, when I was going to church in Ocean City and I was involved with uh, serving meals and then uh, that's about the time when this uh, shelter opened up. Um, it just struck me as I met the different um, men and ladies but as mostly the men show up at the shelter and um, it struck me when I sometimes would have conversations with them at lunchtime and just they're just regular people that mm -hmm. just had some kind of bad luck or made some wrong decisions in many parts and just haven't been able to pick themselves up but mm -hmm. the gratitude that they have mm -hmm. is just amazing <clears throat> it's just you give them a meal you give them um, maybe some clothing or you in the case of the shelter, you give them a place to stay overnight, and the gratitude that they say to you when you feel like I haven't even done that much, and mm -hmm. it's just it just touches mm -hmm. your heart. There's a stereotype of homeless <coughs> men in particular mm -hmm. that they're violent and dangerous, and and you do have to exercise care. Yes, there are persons that have mental health issues, addiction issues, and that's part of what contributed to their, their homelessness. But like you said, my experience with homeless persons is that they have made a mistake or they had an issue or a concern, you know, and, and with having parents who were hardworking and dedicated to the family, maybe people haven't had that. And so they weren't starting out with some of the benefits that I had. And, and I have found them to be some of the most kind, wonderful people who are great, thankful, have a lot of gratitude for what they, um, what they, uh, what you help them with. Is there one person that stands out? One story that stands out? Without saying who it is, but just one person that you could use to illustrate. Well, um, there, there was a young fella, okay, and uh, the first time I saw him, which was early on. Um, it struck me because it made me think of my son. Mm -hmm. I looked at him and there was something in his eyes and his age and I just thought, oh my goodness, this could be my son. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I talked to him, in his case it was some poor choices he mm -hmm. made and his parents just ran out of patience or maybe they mm -hmm. were doing the right thing they just pushed him into some tough love and mm -hmm. said go out there and do, do it, it. Yeah. do it yourself and when I asked him you know you can't like you said you, you have to be very careful because you can't ask too many questions mm -hmm. because you, you might upset them or something like mm -hmm. that but just in casual conversation when I'd asked like how he was doing um, he'd always say a little bit, and he always, always would say, I didn't talk to my parents yet. And that really struck me because 
Most of the time, like, uh, th you'd see veterans, which is mm -hmm. also very, very sad, and uh, mm -hmm. you'd see older men. But to, s to hear this young fella being very regretful for his choices, mm -hmm. and still he hadn't figured out how to get himself back mm -hmm. to what he should be doing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think we get ourselves entrenched, mm -hmm. and we don't know how to go back. And we And, you know... Whether it's pride or whether it's just a lack of ability or lack of understanding to open that door and to start over again. And that's one of the things I love about ministry is because I get to talk to people about grace and forgiveness and new chances and second chances. And, you know, Karen, I'm thankful that God gives us like umpteen thousand chances. Um, not that we presume upon the grace of God, but that we get the chances to start over. Because, I mean, the only people that are perfect in this room are Ted and Arlene. <laughs> and they're here watching us film but you know all of us have made mistakes and all of us have regrets and things that we would change and for homeless men and homeless women I'm sure there's many of those things that if they could they wish were different yeah now men and women's homelessness is a little bit different in my experience because women tend to be seen with a little more tenderness mm -hmm. and they seem to be able to find a place to stay or a family member who will take them in but men have a little bit of a different perception. And you mentioned something that I think is important for us to keep in mind. And that's that so many of these are veterans. Mm -hmm. And whether it's PTSD or some other cause, uh, we who have benefited from their honorable service, I, I think have a responsibility to them to, to, to respond in a way of help and assistance. So when they go to the shelter, they receive a meal Yes. And who prepares that meal? Uh, volunteers. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So people like Ted and Arlene and I and you yes. could prepare a meal. Yes. That's what I do mostly is, okay. is do a lot of the uh, cooking. Okay. And um, so, yeah, you, you prepare a meal and you and you're feeding make it how help. many roughly? Uh, it's roughly uh, 12 to 15. Okay. Last uh, winter when it was a little harsh and there were some storms, and uh, there was a situation where when the storms, there's mm -hmm. a lot of snow, um, it's harder to get volunteers to go in. Um, and then it turned out that those times there was up to 20. Mm -hmm. But most times right now it's averaging 12 to 15. During one of those seasons, I took one of our church members there. He called me. He was homeless, and, and I looked at him as I drove him over to the, the shelter, and he had, he had um, frostbite all over his hands and things, and I knew that had he not gotten into a warm place to stay, that he would have lost fingers and may have lost toes, mm -hmm. and it would have been a huge difference in, in his life. And when I got him there and, and he went in, the reception was just outstanding. I mean, they were just incredibly welcoming and warm. So that reception begins with someone who does check-in. Yes. And have you ever done check-in? Uh, yes, I've assisted with that as well. And, 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 you know, they make it a safe place because certain things have to be left outside right. and cannot be brought in. So check-in generally takes 15 or 20 minutes if you're yeah. new. Yeah, yeah, if you're new, um, because the list of the questions that you have to go through, plus um, you have to, if this is your first time in the shelter, first time of the year, because mm -hmm. every year is a Starts new over. year, uh, each year then uh, there has to be a phone call made to uh, the police station and mm -hmm. also um, one of the uh, lead coordinators, Trish, because they do background checks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they check on the latest um, situations of, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of uh, police records mm -hmm. there may be because they will uh, be very careful about, they don't want any situation that could lead to an issue within the shelter. There are certain legal realities that mm -hmm. cause people to not be able to go through the shelter. Yes. And, and those are safety issues for the volunteers but also safety issues for the other residents of the yes. shelter. And, 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 you know, we all make mistakes, and we dare not sit in judgment even of those persons, but um, there are other ways of caring for 
and assisting them as well. And, and if there would be a person like that that could not come into the shelter that evening, um, the police are very active involved and they will come back and pick the person up and and take them and you know they'll be provided um, food and possibly the hand warmers and other things so there's a real partnership that exists among yes. different organizations and groups mm -hmm. in ocean city uh, as well so when they're there you do the, the you do you get them you do the intake and then they have a meal and then they're there for the evening and I'm assuming that a lot of reality is that they go to bed early because yes. they've been out in the weather <laughs> and they're tired and they kind of want to get some rest but you have opportunity for conversation and chance to watch TV yes yes what's the TV? favorite show that they like Jeopardy to, Jeopardy okay <laughs> and do they do the, do their scores uh, become higher than yours yes they know a lot of questions uh, because you'll mm -hmm. find that uh, in conversations, you'll find that they had careers as mm -hmm. maybe lawyers or which really shocks you mm -hmm. because you sit there and you can't judge, but you know, you find out how intelligent <coughs> some of mm -hmm. them are and how they know all this knowledge. You find out that they're people. Yeah. And, and that there's some, you know that man that homeless man or woman is somebody's child mm -hmm. maybe with somebody's spouse maybe somebody's mother or father mm -hmm. and you know we all have dreams and aspirations for ourselves and our own lives and for the lives of our children and i'm sure that they do as well and somewhere the ship kind of went awry but mm -hmm. it can get back on on target and then you wash their clothes Yes, they have the opportunity. There's um, the situation. What they do is when they go into their rooms, they can take a big plastic bag and put whatever clothing they want in the bag. Mm -hmm. uh, they also have the opportunity to receive a new pair of sweats and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and shirt to wear f for the evening. And then overnight, the um, two volunteers that are staying overnight take turns to just dump that in the washer and dryer mm -hmm. and put it back in the bag and and so that they have you know the opportunity to have clean clothes is there a place for them to bathe yes there's showers um, there's a mm -hmm. men's um, room and a ladies room uh, the shower there are the different bedrooms that are set up with bunk beds one is set aside in case women would show mm -hmm. show up mm -hmm. So when you think about homelessness, and particularly rural homeless, homelessness being very different than a city, um, you guys are meeting many very important needs uh, of these men, predominantly, uh, through this cold weather shelter. Now what triggers the opening of the shelter? Um, unfortunately, it has to be noted that it's going to be 25 degrees uh, which is a combined wind and mm -hmm. uh, temperature and um, that is pretty cold it's very cold <laughs> it's very damp because uh, yeah. over the last week um, trying you know there was days over the weekend it was open mm -hmm. uh, Monday night it was open but like last night it's still cold mm -hmm. but it's not 25 degrees mm -hmm. and they won't be open mm -hmm. But it's um, it's part of the uh, established guidelines that mm -hmm. the state uses for mm -hmm. uh, cold purple shelters. The you know the reality is homelessness is a horrible reality, mm -hmm. regardless. And this is one way of serving. And we wish that we had all the resources in the world to be all things to all people, but you can't. So Correct. you do what you can do. And in those coldest of times, you're offering an alternative, and, and that's important. And and when you think about the cold purple cold weather shelter, if people wanted to volunteer, how would they go about that? Um, well, there's uh, a board mm -hmm. of uh, these volunteers that is organized between uh, St. Peter's Lutheran Church and Ocean City Baptist mm -hmm. Church. And Jason and Trish Long 
uh, from Ocean City Baptist mm -hmm. Church are the coordinators of the volunteers. Okay. So uh, Jason's uh, phone number is 443-513-1563. And that will appear on your screen as well, thanks yeah. to Ted's knowledge. And or he, you could email him at OCMD Cold Weather Shelter at gmail.com mm -hmm. and just tell him of your interest and mm -hmm. uh, you know he will uh, make sure you get the information you need and mm -hmm. provide you the opportunities of how you could help. You know, I think this is important, very important at a number of levels. <clears throat> As a United Methodist, and a person who kind of tries to follow the larger example of John Wesley. Wesley always taught us through his writings and example to be concerned for the poor and to realize that there but for God's grace and maybe some opportunities in life to us and that we don't judge the poor. We work with the poor and learn from them and hopefully by caring deeply walk beside them and you know I, I just think this is so very very important that we develop relationships where we begin to see people as people and not people as objects or someone to be afraid of or make fun of or to say you know why don't you, when we drive down the road why don't you get a job or these things that really because we really don't know that person and you know, mom, my mom was always a big one to say until you've walked in someone's shoes, yes. you don't understand. And we don't know what's brought them to this place. But what we can offer them is kindness, compassion, food, a warm place, friendship. And those are all things that we as people want for ourselves as well. So Karen, thank you for doing the cold weather, code purple cold weather shelter it's a hard thing to say <laughs> but it's really important and thank you for encouraging this church to to do that you know we are reminded that these men these women are people yes. and because they're created in the image and likeness of God they're deeply loved and if God loves them we can too yes. so thank you and thank you. check in with 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 uh, the longs if you'd like more information you can call the church if you'd like more information. We were collecting coats and things for a while, but now we've sort of filled up their storage space. Yeah. So maybe more need will come with that. I don't like cold weather, so I'm hoping we, that we don't have to have any cold weather for the rest <laughs> of the year. Me too. And things so, but you know, it's good to have these resources in our community, even when the weather comes, and to know that people are safe. And I don't know about you, I worry about people who are homeless. I mm -hmm. worry about people who are out there. Um, and this is the third time I've been a part of the Code Purple uh, reality. Twice, uh, once in Delaware, once in Cambridge. And it's just a really valuable ministry. So thank you. And you have a great day. And, thank you. And, and I know something about you. And I'll tell everybody here, you are an Eagles fan. <laughs> yeah. And and they won this past week. Yes. So they're on their way to the championship, the not the Super Bowl, but right. the, the league championship game. Right. So I will even say it because Karen's such a good friend and I have respect for she and her husband. Go Eagles. Thank you. Go Eagles. Have a great day.